so uh, I don't think I should tell you what the, the, the setting is. Just a quick reminder, we are playing in Blasworld and we are in the Anno Santo 1993 and we are playing in the Doom of uh, Plane of Prart in uh, this uh, take on the classical Blasworld, which has really two small things you need to, to know. You are intrepid ones. You are part of the lowest rank of adventurers and heroes, and you are ruled by the knight rulers, which are knights that rules on the kingdoms on the north, influenced by the new Salentine Empire or under a sort of you know a cooperation system. And the intrepid ones are the, the mercenary that uh, knight rulers try to use when you know they have a mission that is too difficult, maybe it's too risky to do, and they can deny if they did the mission or not. And you are, I don't know how to say it in English, you are just the, the, the lowest part of the adventurer uh, scale of the adventurer hierarchy. So pretty much every mission um, um, for the intrepid ones is about spying, sometimes it's about killing things, so killing monster, and doing uh, missions allows you to recover treasures and keep the treasure, the guides that uh, find you the missions are paid directly from for, by the, um, the night rulers. And so the guilds are like a sort of, you know, um, a sort of societies that try to manipulate things. And sometimes they work for the, for the uh, uh, night rulers. Sometimes they work for the, the magi of Krart. And <clears throat> pretty much this is the, the setting. You uh, travel in packs, and uh, a group of intrepid is called a pack. And in different several city of uh, of the of the land of legends, you can find a den. A den is a sort of a refuge, uh, a sanctuary for intrepid ones. In some city, the den is open and people can enter. Sometimes it is a pub. Sometimes it is a local place. In some uh, area of uh, the of the land of legends. Intrepid ones are like um, are not so much welcome because, of course, wh where you go, you bring troubles along, and so people tend to not welcome you very easily. And so, keep in mind that everything that you do can bring you to death by the end of the night ruler, by the end, the, by the end of the magi of Krart, by the death, by the end of the creators of the, the land of legends. And so we begin. So every 13 lunar months, the Magi of the Plain of Krart, or the tournament, everybody knows it. The tournament is to determine who will govern the corrupted land um, under the rule and uh, for the next 13 lunar months. Um, this is a sort of strategy that the Magi um, create to avoid internal conflicts or tend to avoid internal, internal conflicts and uh, weaken the armies of the follower Meiji. The Meiji that rules Krat for the next month can also do everything that they want to the kingdoms around the plain of Krat. How the tournament is done, uh, every mage uh, choose um, a champion the champion that recovered the emblem of victory from the battle piece of Krat is um, the winner and the Magi, which is the, um, the sponsor of the champion, is the ruler for the next 30 lunar months. But you are hearing this as a sort of, you know, uh, common legend, wisdom of the, of the crowd. You are intrepid ones. Your life is very far from this element until now. Your guilds reach to each one of you. You know each other very well from some time. You did some mission before, so you know each other. And the, they say to you that there is a ruling knight, if, in specific, the knight of Balmershain, which is trying to uh, send intrepid ones to Krart to manipulate the election of the mage and try to have a, you know, a sort of the, 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 the mage that will be the ruler of Krat should be someone that he knows or maybe that is not so much interested in the kingdom of Baumershain. 
there are a lot of intrepid ones that are sended to directly to Krat. However, your party, your pack, is not sent directly to, to Krat. It's sent it to Portquag. You were told that there will be a liaison, a contact of the guild in, inside of Portquag. You should bring with you a leather belt with an elaborated uh, design, bronze buckle. Uh, someone should um, uh, get near to you and ask you to exchange the, the belt with a very low priced item and you will answer them uh, yes and you will add a coin, a, gold co a golden coin to the exchange. This is the only instruction that they gave you and they say to you, your contact, your liaison in Porquag will show you what is your mission and will guide you to the mission itself. If you return and the mission failed, or maybe you return and there is no, um, the mission was not successful, well, you will face death because the intrepid ones that fail a mission face the um, um, execution by death. That's pretty much what they say to you. They give you the belt. They give you a piece of paper that pretty much um, explain what I, I already explained to you. And they ship you on a very small ship. It's not very much a ship. It's more like a sort of pieces of wood together. You uh, sail to into the Mistral Sea. You arrive to Port Quag in a very uh, misty day. It's the end of the winter. And the streets of the port are very slimy and muddy. There is a lot of people around. And when you uh, put your feet uh, on, the, on, the very, um, on the very land of Portwag, you feel like people are acquainted. People are like you used to see adventurers like you. Um, they don't see you. They don't look at you like you are in the wrong place probably because a lot of champions for the, the, um, the tournament of Krat already arrived and traveled to Krat. You are in the center of Porquag and you see a very young uh, gentleman, a very young um, teenager with an armor and an elaborate design. You somehow recognize, it, recognize him like a part of the intrepid one, a part of the guilds, and is like facing, um, is like uh, uh, on the door, uh, upon the threshold of the door of a tavern. And in some way, you understand that that is the den of Portois. That is the, the place in which you will find your liaison and you will find someone that can maybe help you with your mission. Um, you enter the, the den and a very strong scent of racid fishman um, warehouse uh, stroke you and you find yourself in a classic tower, classical fantasy tower with a lot of nets um, on, the, on, the, on, the, um, on, on your head. And there is a sort of a very simple tavern. There is two wooden um, piece of wood, two wooden piece of wood and a, a female dwarf behind, which is the, the lady who runs the tavern. And the lady uh, gives to you a sort of sign. Uh, he winks at you and say, and like, I know you are intrepid one. You are welcome here. And that's pretty much all what you did um, from the, the, the beginning of your, of your journey until the beginning of your session with me. From here now, you are in charge of your character. You can ask me anything. I will say to you what your character see and what the action of your character um, creates and provoke in other parts of the world. Best luck. <laughs> Thank you. So I think it's time to take a beer. Fancy a beer, anyone? Yeah. I, I'm always ready for a good beer. <laughs> Perfect. Definitely. There are so. very very few people in the tavern uh, for for a tavern of the, the the larger port of of this of the area um, probably eight nine people and you find two empty spots at the 
um, at the, at the, um, in front of the, of the dwarf lady. And the dwarf lady uh, look at you, uh, at all of you, very, very straight, very slow, and say to you, I get it, four beers. And a young lady, a young human lady, blonde, very blonde, very beautiful, arrives from behind and brings to you four pints of beer, which is very, very clear. And it, it's nearly, it stinks. It's like, you can, you can send a, a, a little of fish inside the beer. Is it fish beer? It exists fish beer? I don't know. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> it's not so just pleasant. the one pint then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, I'll just ask, is this the only uh, um, tavern in, in Port <laughs> <laughs> My beer is also a little bit warm. Perfect. Yeah. Very, it's very not, tasty. No, no, nothing is cold here, uh, except that's for the weather, the, of course. That's the best beer I had uh, in uh, some years. <laughs> well, if you say so. Um, the, the lady... Um, um, really have a, a, a very long look at you, at you all. And in the meantime, people are kind of uh, interested in your presence. Someone look at you, especially they look at the trickster. Who is the, who is the trickster here? I am the trickster here. So probably the people of Portquag are familiar with dwarf, the dwarf race, but you you felt, you feel that they are not familiar with the elf, uh, with the elf race. It's like um, a lot of, it's a, it's a rare thing to have an elf here. Even if there are a lot of champions for the, the Krat uh, tournament and people like try to look at you without being noticed or without, without being so like, like this way. Yeah, and a sneaky, yeah. In a sneaky and way. In a sneaky way. I, I asked the first one, what are you looking for? Intrepid one. Never um, seen an elf. This this little guy, which is about his forties, like it's like speechless. It's like he realized that elf can speak in that <laughs> right moment. It's like you can speak. I didn't know it. And it's like it's taking the, the paint walk outside the the, the, the tavern. And there is another man, uh, an older man, um, a very old, uh, intrepid one, probably uh, from generation ago, which is very fragile. It's near you and he say to you, oh, people here are not acquaintance with the fairy race. As myself, I walk many, many roads with dwarf and elves before. And what brings you here in Porqua, in this little corner, of Krat. We are here to find uh, a good merchant because we have to sell this um, this object. And I show our uh, our uh, metal. Mm. I don't remember. We have the is a is a leather uh, belt with a bronze with, design with a very with large a bronze design. Bronze. I, yeah. That, yeah, yeah, and uh, the the old guy uh, look just a little behind him and say to you, the only merchant here in Porquag, the only one that goes by that name, is the man that you see in the corner wearing the red uh, the red uh, is a red vest. This is a very common vest for merchants, and I know what you're looking for but I don't know if you will find it or maybe if you will find that. Maybe and we'll be lucky. I hope so. He takes the beer, he drinks the beer in your, um, in your name. And you, you, you all see the, the red guy in the corner that is counting coins of, um, of copper. And he's looking at you in a very sneaky way, like, Trying to see if you are the guy, the guys that and the guests that you that is, is waiting or not. It's not sure. Has he did he react when we took the belt out? 
it has it had a little of you know um it's a very mannered man it's like someone that if you go through him with a dagger we want you will do nothing but you see you you see a little wink of the in in the upper part of the of the head like like mm. he was interested in in the object, is it was very quick, very very quick. Okay. So okay. let's go talk uh, to that merchant. I think it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I will. Uh, I will grab the belt from um, from the from trickster, the trickster. Uh, and say, uh, walk over to the merchant and say, um, "You seem to be eyeing uh, this fine belt we have for sale, my friend." And the merchant stop counting the coins and say to you you are late you're supposed to be here three hours ago time evil is of essence we don't this control well. wind exactly <laughs> it, it looks at you and you, you are a warrior with a, a mask on and a full plate a red plate and it looks at you like Okay, it's, it's a bit like intimidated by your present, but it, it tries to cover it. It tries to not to be impressed. Like, yeah, you don't control wind, but you can control something else. However, let's keep it short. We we are supposed to make a sort of theatrical stance. I, I should ask you the belt. You should give me the belt with a, a golden coin and I should give you in return uh, an object of lesser value Gills are all linked to ancient ways. Take a seat. Let's talk business. It's a very urgent matter. It's a mission that you need to, to do very fast and with discretion. Okay. Let's take a seat. And um, mm -hmm. he, he lowered the tone of the voice. He, he gave a look, uh, give a look uh, uh, at the sides and start telling you your knights, the Knights of Bamushing, is uh, sending a lot of intrepid ones to Krat. And it try, it, it's trying to control the election, the tournament. People here say that he wants the Magus Kalugin to be the leader because it's a sort of lesser... Mm, it's, it's very powerful, but it's less interested in Bamershim than the other one. But the main problem of the of your fellow intrepid ones is that there is no map for the battle pits of Krat. There is no map that we know. Near here, in the in the swamp of Krat, there is a stone temple. Some people, some times ago, called it the Sanctuary of Smeebol. It was about a cult of a, an ancient, very powerful monster. And it is said that the magic of Krat relied on Smeebol and the cult of Smeebol to keep, you know, secrets and very powerful scrolls outside the uh, of you know ends of intrepid ones they were a sort of keepers of secrets it is said that the last map of the battle pits of crafts relies in the in the temple of, of smeebol your mission is to find the sanctuary of smeebol retrieve the map give me the map and i will give the map to your fellow intrepid ones in order that they could know what expect them what waits them in the in the battle pits of crafts there's only a problem. And it, um, the face is like this, what, is like- what is it? What is it? <laughs> uh, I, I knew it wasn't uh, a it very enjoyable so thing. So what is the problem? <laughs> the yeah. merchant, the merchant- We, we hear, uh, Daniele, one moment. Uh, we hear yeah. you, uh, a sort of double, triple voice. So uh, echo, there's yeah. an echo. Yeah, and now? Better. Better. Sorry. Okay. Uh, it's still, I don't know. I kind of feel like it's still there. Try, yeah. try to speak. Try. Can you hear me? There is the echo. I don't yeah. know what is this. Mm. Uh, just a little. 
try can to you stay. hear the echo here? No. Better? Okay, Better. let's try this way. So the merchant look to the sorcerer in a very sneaky way like, like this and say, well, there is only one creature that knows the position of the same creature as Viborg, and I don't know if you want to evoke it. And what is this? Suddenly, understand that the creature that he wants you to evoke is a palting. <laughs> okay. You are not very happy as a sorcerer to evoke a palting. Yes. It's not a very happy decision to make. So I say, I look to my fellow intrepid ones and I say, if we invoke this fountain to find out what we need to know it will come with a cost greedy little bastards yes well if we fail in the mission the cost is our lives so can it be worse i mean i'm asking you're the sorcerer so you know no, if it I can be worse i suppose and suppose also not i don't think that we have uh, many coins with us so I hope that we can afford this cost. Oh, yeah. Well, this is the mission. I have some uh, items for you for your travel in my apartments nearby. So we can go there, retrieve the items and go. I will show you um, the only things that I have to help your mission. And then you will travel to the swamps. OK. Fair enough. Let's go. Not with, let's not waste any time here. So you all uh, walk um, behind the, the merchant who is not getting to the, the main door. He, instead, he goes behind the, the, the table to the wall. There is a, a, a really small wooden ship um, just, uh, just there laying on the wall. The merchant look at the, the, the dwarf, uh, the female dwarf um, in, in the tavern, and they have a sort of uh, understanding. The merchant moved the ship and there is a, a secret second entry to the tavern. He opens it and you find yourself um, behind the tavern um, in, a, in a sort of part of the port quag, which is very open. There is a, a very gentle forest Mm, uh, there are some trees and some parts of you know nature here. It's like it is it, taking you to the, the to the end of the city, to the end of the port. It's not a city; it's a very small town. And you you suddenly felt like something is very wrong. So I will ask you, uh, what is the passive perception of your characters, which is in the upper part left? You can see. Um, yeah. passive perception wisdom. I've got a 13. 13. Well, Perfect. Well, 11. Uh, Valentino? 12. 12. So let's see. We roll some dice. Okay. So you, you feel like something is weird, something is very weird. And all of a sudden, you 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 heard us uh, like a sibyl, like, and there is a small piece of wood that goes behind you, and it's the merchant, just straight to the heart. The merchant is like struck in the middle of of the walk, and he fell down so quickly you cannot, you you can't do anything. And with the last part of, uh, of his life and the voice is trembling, it's like, retrieve the map, take it to Magus Kaluk and he will come in. And he dies. Okay. Look around, you. can we see where that came from? Oh, behind the trees. And you can see some shadows. Um, they are like um, running probably away. Um, you can try to, to stop them. You can try to follow them. If we can try to city. catch one of them, if there's several yeah. people, let's try and catch one, try and find out what they know. Yeah. How many, how many, how many figures we see? So, um, Nico Valle 
and uh, uh, Robert, you just see shadows, but the warrior day, which is which has the highest uh, perception rate, the highest passive perception, can clearly distinguish two figure, two shadow black figure. They are like running uh, away from you, but they are not, they seems not, mm, you know, like the usual mm, type of figure. It's like something is wearing the way they are walking. Something very, very weird. Do I, do I think I could catch them? Are they fast or is there something I could like throw a knife and try and just get one of them in the leg? Yeah, you can you can make a sort of sprint and you can try to tackle one of them. It's it's up to you. No, ideally, you can yes. also try try to to land something. I think you have you have a an index. You can throw the oh. index. Okay, well, I'll, if because I I can just even get it, uh, one of them in the leg, then I'll slow him up, and it will be yeah. easier for us to catch him. Uh, Valentino is in the middle. One well, moment. I was I was saying well, you can try to connect again because we still hear your echo try to uh, exit and re-enter yeah. yeah yeah a bit so there are two figures and we have to to stop or catch them yeah so dave our warrior is going to throw an axe uh nico okay and you what what, what do you want to do nico Robert, uh, think, what's your idea? I think that I'm very slow, so I will be behind you. You? Okay. <laughs> I'm a dwarf, so I'm You're... really, really slow. <laughs> but you are agile. Well? Yeah, perfect. We, we hear you very well. See. Better than this way? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Can you hear my echo? No. no. Perfect. So. Perfect. You will try to hit the, the shadow, um, so you can throw uh, your index. What I ask you to do is roll a d20 and add the attack bonus of your index. Uh, not the, the plus five, but the plus four. Plus four. Yeah. And if you hit, you, you will inflict 1d6 die uh, damage with plus two. Okay. So I roll that or you go, you're going to do it? Oh, you can roll it if you want. I have a d20. Oh, well, you, you, you do it. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, I do? Yeah. yeah. Let's see. You make 13 and 4 is 17. So the enemy is eaten by your index and just in the, in the shoulder, in between the shoulder. And you don't know how much damage do you, do you, did you inflict it. Uh, but you see the two figures that suddenly stops moving and you all can see them well. And they like, they like surprised by your presence. Like they wasn't expecting anyone. Mm -hmm. And I think we, that we can start making a combat. Yeah. Right. Let me take the, the map. Time to beat some asses. Asses yeah. <laughs> and asses. So let me take here and... Can you see my screen? Yeah. 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 The two assassins are here in, in the eye part. And you can put yourself anywhere. We usually start in the numbers, but they... they um, they stroke the, the merchant. The merchant is like here, is dead, of course. And yeah. you were very, very far from them. So I think that you should be like here. Perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And our enemies? Here in the upper part, can you see the, the two assassins? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So the one that was struck, struck by Dave is this one. It has like the... Uh, the, the axe of, of the warrior here in, in the back of the shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> they are very, very weird. There, there's something wrong with this, with this guy. So in, uh, in this case, we, we need to have two things. We need to make um, uh, an initiative roll and we need to roll also the, our blood dice. So in the blood sword, there is the blood dice, which is a six-sided dice with three red sword and three blue sword. 
The, blood, the red word, as you can see here, are called audacity. And uh, instead, the blues word, uh, the, the, sorry, the, the, the blues word is called shiver. All character starts the game with the audacity on. It's not a condition, it's like a state. When you are audacious, your critical hit is stronger and you can rest better. When you are in shivers instead, the enemy critical hit is stronger and when you rest, you rest in, in, in a sort of, you know, is, a, is an, an, an easy rest. So anytime you make a combat, the first thing you do is re-roll the blood dice. If you want, you can roll a one, di one six-sided dice. One, two, and three is shiver. Five, four, five, and six is audacity. Roll it. I can roll for Dave if you want. And uh, say to me if you are audacious or if you are shivering. No, I got a, I got a six-sided, so it's one to three for shiver. One, two, three, shiver. Yeah, it is a shiver. Oh my God, that's not good. So audacious. The sorcerer. So the sorcerer. That's not I, good at all. I keep the audacity. Oh I, my God. I also keep the audacity. Oh, perfect. So this is important because in fifth edition, we all roll the initiative like in other tabletop RPG and you act in order of initiative, but the character that has Shiver always act after the monster. If your blood dice change during the combat, the, the, at the beginning of the next round, your uh, initiative will still still the same, but the initiative order will change. So it's a very strategical combat and it's very dynamic. So I ask you to roll a d20 and add your initiative modifier and tell me how much you have your initiative. 14. The sorcerer has five. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Five in total. Five in total, yes. This is a d20. <laughs> yeah, yes. A classic D20 plus initiative. Okay, I, I made 13. I got 20. I oh my god, 20. Very good. 17. 17. Perfect. And Valentino 13. 13, yeah. Yeah. So the order will be for now Sage, Trickster, Enemies, uh, Warriors, Sorcerer. If the, 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 the enemy, warrior. The, the enemies have uh, four, 14. I am 13, so I think I. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, 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 sorry. You are after. Arithmetics yeah. work different here, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here we go. So we have, you are in the hands of, in the hands of the sage here. The so, sage should do, should do something to, to save I, the day. I, um, I run uh, to the enemy. Yeah. And uh, I think that uh, I can get to them uh, with my short dwarven legs. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And um, uh, if I can get, uh, I will try to strike uh, the, um, the man uh, with the, which has been uh, wounded by the mm -hmm. index uh, with my quarter stuff. I think that you can reach the other one because the other, the, one. Okay. The other one, yeah, the, the, this one is too so far for you. You can okay. reach him. They're very like at the at the end of the run, like whoa, yeah, with, with the last part. You can try to eat him. Yeah. Okay. So it's uh, thirteen plus four, so seventeen. Oh, you hit him very very well. So. I am uh, in audacity, so I uh, also uh, have a plus two to my damage with yeah. my quarter stuff. Correctly, because if you use your quarter stuff and you are a sage, you have a plus two in audacity. So it's uh, nine damage total. Oh my god! And uh, I also can uh, use my bonus action to hit uh, the the enemy with uh, the other end of my stuff. Yeah, yeah. Try so you it. the the first hit. Is like on the shoulder, and yeah. the second hit is like. Then I bah, bah. reverse my quarter step and I try to hit him on the on the other side. Let's see if you can hit him. Uh, Sixteen. Yeah, you can hit him. Yeah. So it's a d4, which I didn't take. So let me. Just... 
just a moment. You are a war machine. It's, uh, it's uh, um, two damage plus uh, the plus two is also on this attack. Uh, no, it's just on the on the on first, the one. first one. Yeah, I mean, so, so it's uh, eleven. The dice is two. Okay. Yeah, so you see the uh, the assassin. You can see them clearly. Are uh, two assassin. The one you hit is a is a man. The other one, the one eaten by the axe, is a girl. And you see them very clearly. They are some. They wear some strange robes, black one, black robes, and they have knife in their hand and a short short uh, sword. And the like, probably they were here just to eat the merchant. They are not prepared for a battle. And that just it, like you, you have eaten the boy so, so hard that he, he cannot do, do, do anything. It's like, it's like on, uh, on his knees. Shocked. Shocked. And he looks at you like, who are you? And the girl <laughs> is like, I, I'm, I'm, it's like, I'm, I'm not with his. She takes the axe from the shoulder like these, and she tried to eat you with the with the axe. V very a very bold move. I see that I'm alone uh, in the middle of the <laughs> enemy. And I say, oh crap! So the total is fifteen. I eat you. Yeah. Oh my god. So. Uh, she, the, the, the heat is not so strong. He hits you uh, just on on uh, on the arm on your on, on your right arm. You suffer four damages. Um, is is not that is not very strong because she's not strong. She's a very strong lady, but it's like very straight uh, frightened from uh, by you and is like is trying to 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 see if she can reach someone or something and flee from the combat. And now it's up to the trickster. May I be able to get there and uh, hit or not in my action? During, I, I, I'm able to Yeah, to you, can, you, you can arrive th th there, but you can also move and extract your... Uh, I think you have a, a bow. A short bow. Yeah, you can use also the short bow. You can move... Like here in in the in the in the in the below part of the map, in the the bottom part of the map, and you can shot because if you That's, shot yeah. from here, I, you can still hit the, uh, the hit the stage. This page. So okay, I move uh, on the right, and I mm -hmm. try to hit with my short bow. Uh, yeah, try. Okay, eighteen with a die uh, plus. 18? 18 with a die. Well, plus uh, dexterity 20, 23, I think. Well, I think you, uh, you, you hit. Her. I hit. Okay. <laughs> you hit. Her. So, uh, one. Okay. I made one with die, so four damage. But I think you, are, or you have also the sneak attack because the enemy is in combat with, with uh, one of your allies. So it's plus so, 26. Well, yeah. So Perfect. four damage. Five. And... Okay. Five. One and three. So. Uh, nine damages. Then nice. nine damages in total. So the girl is eaten on the on the on the army uh, herself, and when when she see you, it's like, it's, it's like, it's, hi. <laughs> it, she can believe it. She, you you're an elf, so she she's also surprised by your presence, <laughs> and uh, you you see them, and you suddenly you are suddenly aware that they are not the, the classical assassin. They were here to eat the merchant and probably they were not, in, they, the instructions were not so good. They didn't expect any fight at all. So they very, they were no harm or they just black robes and that's it. They, they expect They're the merchant prepared. alone. No, no, they, they are not totally not prepared. So, so Dave, it's up to you. It's your turn if you want to act. Can I get it? I can get in there and hack. Yeah, you can get them. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. can I arrive will... to the girl, but also to the man. It's the same. I'll take the girl because the man's stunned, isn't he? She's still fighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a D20. I'll um, yeah. give that a go. That's an eight. I add 
five, I think, or is it more? Yeah, five, because you have the, the, this one. Okay. So that's 13. 13? 13. 13. Uh, 13? No, no, no. You cannot eat her because she has one point uh, higher than you. Okay. And you just eat with this word. And she's so struck by the elf that she, she see a reflection on your sword. And she's like, suddenly she she tries to, to avoid this word. Avoid. You eat her, but you eat just like one one point here on the shoulders, not like just like one one very simple cut on the on the ropes, and there is no no ones at all. And uh, you look at her, and it's like the eyes, the eyes of the girl and, and the man. Are, are very red, very reddish, very, very like, like they're, they are under the influence of some substances. I don't know. Mm. But it's like something that is weird from uh, um, in, the, in the girl and in the boy. So this is for, for after the combat. Mm -hmm. And Robert, it's up to you. Yeah, you so uh, this red eye, um, is that seem to be like magical in nature or do they seem to be on uh, something else? A well, conjunctivitis of, of, of the cold. Yeah, and magical, no, uh, but you you sh you surely sense something magical in, in them. Very very small magical power, not from them, but from something they have on. You cannot you cannot sense it very well. So you should okay. try maybe detect magic or probably get near them and try to see what's what they what they yeah all right well uh before that i want to yeah i will move forward i will i'll move up to like where that three is um so i'll move forward a bit uh, and then i will kind of use my um sharp mind as a sorcerer yeah uh to allow me to re-roll the blood die and then i will also um yeah uh see if i can uh find some information about uh uh, these enemies so that I can get a bonus to uh, yeah to attack I guess yeah, so yeah. reroll the blood dice reroll there we go I got a five so I'm now audacious. oh audacious yeah perfect all right and that was a bonus action uh, so I still have my regular action um, yeah I'm gonna try to uh, I don't want to try to kill them because I want to talk to them so I want to try to kind of intimidate them and so yeah. um, I would like to uh, make an intimidation check and I say um, I say, as you can see, my fellow intrepid ones have um, have nearly killed you. You can uh, tell us what we want to know now, or we can kill you, and I can get the information from your corpse. Um, so I okay. want to try to intimidate them. Wow, uh, that scared with, me. With, <laughs> <laughs> try with the intimidation. I will see if they... All right, so uh, I'm not skilled in it, but or not proficient, but I still have the bonus. And then I get yeah. a bonus equal to the audacity, so I get plus three from, from yeah. our pack. All yeah. right, so I get plus six pack. total. Um, and I rolled a 16, so that's a 22. Oh, 22. And you see suddenly the girl and the boy, the, the boy is like, he's so shocked, he's like, whatever, I will tell you anything. Uh, <laughs> the, the girl is like, He's trying to 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 is it's an inner fight. It's like trying to not um, not give you satisfaction. But at the end, she look around and she see four intrepids and it's like I'm not prepared. So the they uh, let the armor, the weapons fell down, and you see them in knees and they try like they're trying to to go pity on you, like, don't kill us. Try, we, we are just following orders. We are here from, uh, we, are, we were sent, we were sent here um, to kill the, the merchant. And we, we won't do any harm to you. And, but y you can see that they are deceive, trying to deceive you. So it's like, you are not what? convinced at all. But who sent you? And they say to you that the, the girl is like, uh, say to, to the boy, shut up. And the boy is like, we were sent here by the, by, um, by the forces of Krart. He's not telling you anything. He's just telling you, you know, a generic thing is like the forces of Krart. Probably is, it, it, it doesn't know who sent them. It's like, 
a contract it's like mercenaries we can try to um, to to roll a die to see if they are uh, lying to us well i think oh, yeah she told him to shut up which means they do know something because she was worried that he was going to tell yeah. us something yeah mm -hmm. so i think split the two of them up and separately interrogate uh, one or the other will give us what we need very very good i like it come with me boy i will teach you the way of silence <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you you split them up and when you uh, who's taking the girl who's taking the boy i think uh, robert already has the measure of the girl he's uh, mm. he should be leading yeah. the, the interrogation there sure i'll take her I'm okay. taking the boy, but I don't think that uh, it will give me much information. But uh, the warrior I, I will have some, some fun with him. I think the warrior will convince him to talk. Okay. Yeah. And when you split them up, uh, all of a sudden, you, 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 you look uh, on, on the right and you will see, you remember the, the young lad that stayed on the door of the tavern well, he's here, he's spying on you, he's behind the tree and he's spying on you and it's like, it, it has a very struck face, like he's, he's so shocked, like he's, he's witnessed something very, 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 very brutal. And you all go, why is he here? You, you're like all struck by his presence. You, you don't understand why he's here. Come here, I, boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I go I go to catch him. <laughs> okay, because when they say it's come here, boy, the boy is like, no. <laughs> <laughs> can you can you roll me your um your dexterity? You can use ac acrobatics or maybe athletic. I think acrobatics. Acrobatics, yeah. Acrobatics yeah. perfect. So uh, 15. 15. Okay, you catch him at the very end. So it's very fast for, for a young boy. It's very, very fast. And you catch him at the very end. And he's like, don't kill me, don't kill me, don't kill me. I hit him softly. Hit him softly, okay. <laughs> like <laughs> hit, him, hit him softly, like, softly. Uh, like four or five damage. No, nothing deadly. <laughs> 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 and you're, um, you, you see the, the, the boy that uh, is, um, is telling you, don't, don't, don't kill me, don't kill me. Uh, they scare what me. Are you, they force what me. are you doing here? We are the, forcing you to do what? The, you, you don't understand the, the, the magic here. The magic are the law. They control everything. They know everything. The intrepid ones cannot nothing. The, 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 the knight's ruler cannot nothing. They are too powerful. They, they convinced me to, 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 to say to this assassin where the merchant war was. How, how they convinced him? Oh, with gold? They, they have, no, they have other, other methods. They, they sent someone here two days ago. He enters my house in the night and he said to me, if you don't do what we said, you will, you will be dead. And so your family. Do you not understand that the intrepid ones, everything depends on us being resolute. And you have failed, boy, at a young age. You're very young to learn that if you fail, as, fail the intrepid ones and you die more certainly than you will ever, any fate you would suffer under these magi, they're simply local rulers who we will control. We will install our puppet here. But you have failed the intrepid ones, and that is... That is a, the worst, worst dereliction of duty. You will and not live. I will tell you that now. I think that you, your words struck him like, in it's like, is, is in, in tears because yeah. it's, the words were like daggers for, for him. It is like, I, I know, but I'm, I'm so young and I, I fear for my family. I will do better. We no, you will, not, you, you will never get the chance to do better because there are no second chances amongst the intrepid ones. You have already failed. You are already dead. 
you must tell us what you know in order to to somehow scratch back a little bit of, of <laughs> recompense for your failure and then you will die okay and it's very very moved by your word it's very very moved and um, it, it it brings you um near um uh, nearby there is a sort of ditch uh very natural ditch um very deep very deep and he say to you um it was a shadow he entered my house and he brought me here and he said to me i will send two assassin they will kill the merchant they will they need to do it before the intrepid ones arrived you will know when they will arrive kill the merchant before and put the, the corpse of the merchant inside the well inside the ditch and i will know that the mission is done it was a it was a shadow i didn't recollect any details of the face Dave, if you want, you can roll a d20 and add your insight to know if he's lying or not. Okay, hang on a second. So that's plus three. And I've got a 23. Oh, okay, he's not lying at all. He's very, very true. <clears throat> uh, he's very genuinely moved and he's also, he feels like crap. He's like, <laughs> it's it's two days I'm in trepid and I'm failing. It's very, very, like, it's a so huge failure. So if they'll know, they uh, if they'll know the merchant is died by putting his body in the yeah. in the ditch in the ditch. Yeah. If we put the assassin, it would be a very nice uh, <laughs> news. Okay, for I'm them. giving you the choices here <laughs> because you can put the merchant corpse and like move stealthy to the temple, or you can just like make a a statement and just put the assassin body. No, we, we need to, to we need to talk. So we, we can put the merchant, but the assassins and the young boy are still alive. So okay. we need to to understand what we do. Do we have yeah. to kill the assassin and maybe convince the boy, or do we have to call? Uh, do, we, do we have to uh, kill everybody? So we have to decide what to do. So <clears throat> the, the boy sh will, will never th th trees make treason again on the intrepid ones. He's so struck by the words of the warrior. Uh, you think that he will do anything you will say. The assassins are very, uh, I don't know what to say. They are like uh, looking at you, trying to, to see if there is a way to avoid death. So they probably are open to... To, uh, to do anything to avoid death. You just need to find the right way. <clears throat> Very interesting. Mm. What we can do? How do we can convince them? Mm. We have to talk. We have to split them, yeah. as, yes. we, as yeah. we said, and talk with them. So, so I will so go first. Well, uh, I think that we can start from... Uh, um, the trickster and the sorcerer and the girl, because yep. the sorcerers so percept well, as had a perception of something magical on them, very mm -hmm. very small magic, but something magical. So the first thing you can do is like just like see what they have on their body. And mm -hmm. They have just ropes, and you mm -hmm. try to see what they got, and you see that the girl has one dagger, one ritual dagger, which is very strange. Um, a pooch uh, of uh, 15 silver pieces of coin, uh, a scroll with the drawing of the face of the merchant. And uh, when I say the face of the merchant, uh, I'm saying that the, the drawing is like this. <laughs> <laughs> so she could have killed anybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh -huh. it's like, okay. And then you... You you so you find um, a sort of uh, a pocket, it's not hidden, and instead in, inside the pocket you find two small stones with blood stains on it, and the blood stains move, and you know this is a magical object. You can try to understand what it is. I will do so. How do uh, do you want me to cast detect magic or an arcana check? 
So you can Something do else. both. Uh, detect magic just say you what is the level of power. If you want to know something about it, you can just do an arcane check. Okay, I'll do an arcana check then. Uh, I rolled an eleven plus four, so that's fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. So you you are not sure, but you think these are bloodstones, which is a very common item in Krart, but not outside Krart. So this is just a treasure itself. Bloodstones as are told to people that they are they have inside a very small drop of the blood of the true magi. It's a it's like a legend, but they have a very small but important magical power. You can read through magic um, the blood the blood stain on the on the stone to understand how many days. Um, you still have to the tournament. So they are a sort of calendar. Each year, the, blast, the, the stone, the stain will uh, move and tells you how much day you have still the tournament. And see, as you can read them, you think you have 10, 11 days until the tournament begin. It's a very important item. Nobody knows when the exact, the exact date the exact day in which the tournament begins. You know, every 13 months, of course, but you don't know the day. You just go there and one one day at dawn, people are like, the tournament begins. Mm -hmm. You have mm -hmm. a great advantage here. All right, well, I definitely pocket those as well as the coins and the daggers. Um, and I say, uh, and I say, you have one chance to tell us your friend already told us that you know more than you're letting on to. And I kind of uh, raise my hand and sort of this sort of uh, blue kind of frost kind of washes over my hand. There's a little, a small kind of very sharp uh, kind of like icicle that kind of forms yeah. in front of my hand that's like threatening her with magic. Yeah. And uh, uh, let, uh, you can make me um, an intimidation roll an intimidation check, I can grant you advantage because you already have established a connection with her. And so it's like she already is on the brink of losing it. Okay. Um, <laughs> however, she seems to be uh, tougher than I think uh, because I, my, I rolled advantage, so I rolled two dice, but I only got a six. So that's a total of nine. <laughs> so um, she look at you and she say to you, if I tell you what I know, they will kill me and they will kill you and they will dance on your corpses. And she's very, very serious. She's a young girl, but you can see scars on. She, she put the, um, the um, I don't know how to say it, the, the hood behind her. Mm -hmm. And she, you see a, a lot of scars on her, her body and um, probably she faced the same uh, story that you, you face as a sorcerer. So you recognize her I, as a child of Krart, probably. And um, not, not if we dance first. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You're, you're trading for, for you know, possible pain later for death now. But if that's your so, choice, so be it. Mm, uh, Sorcerer and also trickster, uh, make me an investigation check because I think that you can get some information just for, for the, the thing that she she took the wood away and you see the scars there. Mm. Uh, I got a 14. 14, okay. The trickster. One moment. Here yeah, yeah, no problem. Uh, 15 with die. Okay, 15. 15. So you both look at each other. The trickster is like, like one minute ahead in thinking this, but the sorcerer is like just behind. You see the scars, you see the lady, and you see and you, 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 you're like, she's from Krat, but she has the stones and she has um, a picture of the merchant it's not probably it's not okay it's, there's something wrong here is not she she's not doing this and she's not taking order from crowd probably there is something else somewhere else 
she went to someone, this person give, uh, gave her the mission and then she came to, to Porquang. So probably he knows where the temple, when the sanctuary of Smeeborg is, probably the cult of Smeeborg tell her to kill the merchant. Since she has two blast stones, which, you know, is a very rare item, is a common item in Krart, but you don't know it very well because you, you never was in Krart. So you are like, probably they gave her the blast stone at the temple and they say to her, kill the merchant before the tournament begin. If it, mm. if it is so, she know where the temple is and you don't need to evoke the falcon. <laughs> Very nice one. So let's uh, take the um, let's give some time to Dave and Nico, which are which is um, they are doing the integration of the boy, yep. and uh, you are like fifteen feet, twenty feet away from the girl, um, but there is some veg vegetation uh, from be between you. And you see the sorcerer and the tricks are doing they they stuff. Well, what do you do with the with the boy? Okay, uh, I I'm not very good uh, with uh, my words, so I am uh, <clears throat> just your say, presence. I, I'm helping the warrior uh, with my presence. Okay. Yeah, well, so I, gonna... I have my 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 staff uh, ready, and uh, if uh, he says a word that I don't like, I will hit him. Okay. 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 I can see, boy, that you weren't fully responsible. The, the girl was the ringleader here. Probably you didn't want to go along with it. You, you saw that you were outmatched very quickly, realized the, the gruesome retribution that the intrepid ones visit on any who oppose us. And you know that you don't want to face that. The girl's already dead, forget about her. I mean, she, there's no way she can save herself, but you can save yourself. Somebody came to you and gave you this mission. If you tell us, then your fate need not be as horrible as hers. So first of all, you get an, in, an uh, inspiration die because you're, you're role playing. So whenever you want, you can spend in the inspiration to have advantage. Okay. Um, you can make a, a deceiving uh, check, a, a deceive check, because you are, I think you're trying to deceive, manipulate him. And let's, let's see okay. you know, what, what I get. Okay. Roll your dice. All right. So... Um... That's a 12. Hmm. Uh, I don't think I get any bonus on that. Oh, no, I get, I get a minus. <laughs> oh, my God. 11. So you 11. So probably because of your armor and you, you're wearing a mask, so the, the boy cannot see your face and so can you see your expression. Um, the mask at the same time is allowing you to intimidate people, but, it, but people cannot see your face. But... You, you are kind of convinced that you, you didn't um, perform very well, mm -hmm. but the boy look at you and say to you, oh, I, if you can spare me, I, I will do anything. Or maybe if you can give me a quick death, a quicker death and a, a, a lighter death that the one that the cult of Zmibo will we gave me. Well, normally the intrepid ones would have to exact a more horrible fate, but we're in a hurry and we have more important things than you. So I think I can honestly promise you a quick and relatively painless, uh, not completely painless, but relatively painless death, quick anyway, quicker than your accomplice is going to get. Um, if you satisfy uh, our, our um, curiosity in this matter as to who hired you. And he, he looked at you and said, it was someone in Krat that asked us to go to the temple, to the century of Zmiborg. The cult is there. They are crazy. They give us a, a sort of powder and they ask us to find this, this man, this merchant and kill him. 
they were sure someone here could help us. And when we see, we saw the boy and the boy pointed at us, the merchant, we, we thought that it was done. Nobody say to us that there will be intrepid ones. And you and took, you, this is powder that you, you took, it was some kind of chemical or drug or herb? No, they like blow the powder on our face. They said it was like a sort of bless from Smeeborg itself. Okay. We didn't know. And well, well, that will probably kill you anyway, then. I think so. I don't yeah. know. I hope not. Well, but... it doesn't matter because you'll you'll already be dead. So, so we've already agreed. <laughs> he's that's trying, he's trying to avoid that in, in all the ways. Well, he's negotiated, possible. he's negotiated the best outcome he could have, which was a quick and relatively painless death. I think we've agreed on that one. So where, and this is the the most crucial question that could save you from the long lingering, horrible, maimed death that you'll otherwise get. Where is the temple of Smeeborg and how do we get to it? <laughs> and he said to you, he says to you, well, there is no map to the temple, to the temple of Smeeborg. There is no way you can gather except with some someone that guide you, some fool, mm -hmm. mad people that will guide you and help you avoid the traps and I don't know how we can we we could escape it. I, I thought that we will we would die before reaching Pork Quack. And here we are. Yeah. Okay. Well you that's a good interview answer uh, for the job. You may get the job <laughs> because I think you're more perhaps biddable than your accomplice. But we'll we're gonna find out if she would agree to we only need one of you to take us there. But I think you may be the front runner. <laughs> no. It's like, oh yeah, oh yeah. So you get to live a little bit longer, unless you die in the swamp. Is in me. It's like I will do anything for you, master. I will do anything. In the meantime, I um, I will check uh, his eyes, and I will try to understand uh, if uh, the the powder mm. that uh, the mm. cultist uh, blow in their face uh, mm. is going to kill him. Uh, or make him go mad uh, make me before a, we get to the temple. A, a, medicine, a medicine check. I think you can understand it. It's not difficult. 16 total. Oh yeah, you can understand it. So this is a powder of no sleep. It's like they are trying to uh, prevent them to sleep and to be fully aware of what is doing. Probably they, are, they tricked them in some way. Uh, you think that they did something to them before they send them here. And there is only one problem that you recall from your study in the guild and in the monastery. The, the, the kind of power that you see, the, the reddish shot that you see, the only way to get this powder is from a very complex and very dangerous ritual, a dark ritual. So, there's something going on in the century of Smeeborg. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not pleasant at all. Okay, so I say to the other, um, uh, let's uh, keep a uh, guard on him tonight because uh, he won't be able to sleep. Yeah. And, uh, well, you, you gather all together and you check the facts from the girl and from the boy and... Mm -hmm. You, you think you have understand the things. Someone is trying to kill the merchant because he wanted to, to retract the map and to enter the, 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 the sanctuary of Smeeborg. Probably they tried to kill the merchant before telling you the mission, not just because they, they know the mission, but just because the merchant know how to find the temple, where to find him with the help of the, of the foul team. Uh, because you should you know that you need to know what to ask the file team very well in order to have the, the, the knowledge. You just can't say to the file team, I want to get to Zmeeborg because, you know, anything could happen. You can be evoked in the presence of Zmeeborg itself. So you don't want to, to, wrong, to, to, to say the wrong words to the file team. And um, what do you want to do next? So I, I think that uh, we should uh, take the boy as a guide uh, and uh, I think the girl uh, can uh, make a dive in the well. Uh. And, and the other, the, the, <laughs> the, the uh, novice intrepid one who failed us 
so badly, I think uh, he must very clearly die. Because we would all die if we failed. He should expect yeah. to die, in fact. He should mm. be proud to die as, a, as he failed. He could also deceiving you uh, in the future, maybe. So yeah, it's true. You, it's that that's totally totally possible. And uh, so maybe well, may I ask a thing to the boy? Have you ever uh, followed the merchant in his apartment? No. He, Do you know where he lived? No. He, he said to you and the girl too that uh, they don't know where to live, where, where, where he was living. But the, the young boy, the young intrepid one, yeah, said the... to you, I know where the merchant lived. <laughs> hmm. Maybe could be still be useful for us because I'm... the merchant said uh, it had uh, some, some items for us. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. And also because although we, you know, the boy may be able to take us to the temple, Maybe the foul team would be able to deal with the problems we would face on the way. Yeah. The boy says it's very difficult. And one option we have with the um, the novice, who, the failed novice, is to take him to the veteran intrepid one. And, you know, the guy, because basically that guy is worthy of a great deal of respect since he lived to be an old age and retired. So yeah. how many yeah. intrepid ones do that? Yeah. So I think yeah. we should take him back to him and say, this boy has failed abysmally. And he's back to square one, but he could be made your apprentice if you think you can do anything with him. Yeah, I, I think that you you are you are correct. Um, all of you can agree that the 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 old uh, intrepid one could be also the only people, the only person in Porkwag that could can avoid the young boy to to tell things to you know to to tell that assassin was yeah. here, mm -hmm. that the merchant was killed, uh, because you can face problem from the, the empire, you, the intrepid ones are all the time threatened by the soldier of the new Salentine Empire, uh, the Black mm -hmm. Guards. And so you can try to reach the, the house of the merchant, is not far from here, is in the woods, is just outside of Porkwag. And you put the girl inside the, the ditch before go. <laughs> no? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. 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 You just put heard them just, down, just like <laughs> and um, you, you, the last see, flight. you see her falling down without making any sound at all like he is like his suffering is ending and so she smile at, the, at that and so he's not like afraid of dying it's a very tough girl and um, you reach the house of the mansion which is a very lower um, house with a uh, small a small house, a circle house, which uh, a night roof, and um, there is a, a chimney uh, outside, and it's uh, you see the smoke coming out from from the chimney. You open the door. There is no one here, and you see that on the table is a very com uh, comfort house. On the table, there is a rope, 50, 50 feet of uh, amber rope. There is some rations that the merchant prepared for, for you, four lanterns, and there is also a map. And you, if you open it, you can see that there's a very rough map of the swamps. It's not a, a map that you can use to, to find the temple, but it's like a map that is like more for the morality of the group. It's like more, you can see some wave spot on the map, on the map and try to to understand where you are inside this one. And there is nothing here uh, outside of that. Okay, I can take the objects. Yeah. How, well, I mean, I'm just curious that maybe mm -hmm. the mage could answer this. Um, how would he have intended us to summon the foul team? Well, he, has, he had um, a scroll of um, a lesser scroll invocation uh, on his body, but the, so the sorcerer here can evoke the Faltin as a country okay. at will, because no matter what, the Faltin will ask you something. So if you evoke him and you don't have anything that is interesting, you evoke him and he's just like, I'm not interested at all. So it's like, you can evoke him anytime you want. 
Well, we have a spare bloodstone in case the fault team would be interested in a bloodstone. We have two. We only need one. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. And yeah. so you, you'll find also the, the, the scroll of, uh, of evocation of Faltin, um, not on inside the, the house of the merchant, but on the body of the merchant. Okay. And okay. anyone can, can cast this uh, um, unchained scroll, but if you cast it and you are not a sorcerer and you fail, uh, you will get the uh, sort of ricochet. Um, you will get some damages. From the the, the, so the the sorceress is the perfect one to yeah. try to evoke the fault. Mm -hmm. So we maybe go to, we, the, to this we can save a bef no we can save before the little guy, bring him, him to the old intrepid one. Oh yeah 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 yeah. It was an option. So you you bring the boy to the to the old guy and you find the old guy on the. Uh, in the square of the of Porquag, near bis, uh, near the the house of the um, of the burgmaster, and uh, he looks at you in a, in a very um, distinguished and very honored way. Like uh, it's, it's like he, he respected you. He respects you, and you. Who is the one that tells him the story of the of the young lad? Yes, I'll tell him. Okay, and you see. The, the eyes of the old intrepid ones darken. He looks at the boy. He takes the boy with the end, and suddenly he doesn't have the 70 years he has. He's just an intrepid one like before. The strength in him, the, the fierce in him, he takes the boy and he says to you in a very deep voice, I will take care of these legs. I will guide him to a true path. And that's just it. And the lad is very frightened by the, his he presence. <laughs> he should be. And he knows that he avoided that, he avoided that by just you know, one mm. centimeter, one millimeter. And so you think that mm, you won't want to have any problem at all from, from the lad. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We right. can go to the swamp. Yeah, yeah. We have a re some some time to go to the swamp, and we will end the, the session in the swamp. And uh, for people to know the end and play the, the end of the adventure, of the quick start on themselves, and uh, without spoilers. <laughs> so, for the whole day, you walk in the misty shadow of the of Port Quag surrounding. And at the end of the day, you arrive near the swamp. It is a very chill um, end of the day. It's winter. And just when you make the first step inside the swamp, you see the, the sky is clearer suddenly. The mist is not there. And you can see clearly the smoke columns rising from the swamp of craft from, from the the, the, the place in which the tournament is held, the column are so big and so frightening. They are like towering over you. There is hundreds of feet in the sky and there is no place in the swamp you cannot see the smoke. A bitter scent of uh, wood and bone flesh uh, reaches you and you find yourself in the puddles of mire surrounded by traces of intrepid ones that, like you, tried before to fight the swamp because there are a lot of skeleton pieces around you just emerging from the, from the, from the soil. And you find yourself in the swamp walking by and trying to find a way until... Hmm, until you hear clearly, very clearly, very distinguished, the sound of someone digging the earth, digging the soil, is very clear. Can we see this person uh, anywhere? You, you see the, the, the swamp is very, uh, you are in a piece of water, of, of aquatrine, and you, you see the, the, the earth, the soil just kept 
getting a little bit more dry and there is two trees you you enter the like a, a natural door on these trees you enter it and you find yourself on a precipice and there is a very old giant tree which uh, is it's a whole tree is very is a dead tree so there are there are no leaves on it instead of leaves the tree has the a lot of ropes a lot of hanging ropes on the on the branches um under the tree there is a very huge man a very huge figure in plate armor with some sign on on the on the shoulder is a vessel of some houses noble houses he has two corpses nearby they are soldiers probably from the empire and it's like digging a um a hole for the bodies and when when he sees you because it's like here he 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 takes a hand on the sword and say to you, he says to you, who's the enemy or friend? I Neither. hope that we are not hmm. enemies. You have made a pretty good job with these people. And he is looking at you, oh, sorcerer. They are not my enemies. They are my bodyguards. Weak people who I am the pleasure of speaking with who are you what are you doing here we are just a pack of intrepid ones whose mind their own businesses hmm. perfect we can travel together it is inside the the, the the hole that is digging and when he gets outside you can see that he's very, very tall. He's, he's, a, he's a huge person. He's like a tower, man. He's like coming to you and he's like, my name is Björk von Rotesburg. Rotesburg. I am a nobleman from Elizabeth and I'm trying to reach the, the plains of Krat and the stronghold for the tournament. We can travel together to Krat if it's uh, the objective of your missions and we can help each other. Surely you are stronger than two empire soldiers. What happened to your bodyguards, if you don't mind us asking? He is opening their hands and he, say, he says to you, well, skeletons happened? Okay. I hate when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> they randomly... I don't know to say it, rewalk by the mist of Krat. Sometimes you walk by the, one of them and you think the skeleton is just laying down dead and the next minute is like up and fighting you as hell. They were weak, too weak. Well, it's good of you to bury them anyway. It's the right thing to do. Hmm. And uh, he sees uh, the the young um, the young assassin that you are bringing with you, and uh, it's like it's very small in comparison. It's like, what's the problem with that guy? Uh, he's a he's somebody that we'll be burying later, but he isn't quite oh. ready yet. <laughs> when you say this, it's like ho 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 ho. Very, very good. I think you are a wholesome pack. We should surely travel together. These are very dangerous planes. We, um, we will consult amongst ourselves. Yeah. That's no problem. I will be here. Yeah, you the finish graves. burying your dead. So my thinking like, is that um, this is a, a way, some distance away. We don't know if we can trust him, but he won't be any more trustworthy if we don't travel with him. He'll just follow us. Yeah. So we're probably sure. better off having him near. Yeah, and uh, I think that uh, we at least could uh, hide behind him uh, in a fight. <laughs> <laughs> Surely <Yeah>. you can. <laughs> Surely you can. Also, the, the trickster 
and the, the sorcerer, maybe the warrior, uh, which is a bit bigger, is like, you know, it's not so big as York, but he's very, you know, very big. And uh, yeah, and you can see the, 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 the symbols on, uh, on the, the shoulder of, the, uh, of York is, is, is very trustworthy because is the, 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 the figure of the, of the knight, um, you cannot think that is deceiving you in any, in any kind of way. And if he finishes digging up the graves, he, he takes the body of the bodyguard like, it's, like they are very, very light. It's like moving them inside the, the hole, like just, you know, feathers. And then he takes the, um, the art on the, on, the, on the graves and he, he, he takes some, some branches from the tree it doesn't need to, you know, to, to, it doesn't need a much effort. It's just like taking branches. It's like making a sign of the, of the tombs. And you see him kneeling down and just not praying, but just trying to respect the, the bodyguards. It is very, it's very weird because you, you sense that he's not very good in a good relation with the empire, but at the same time, it's like honoring the falling. And so you are, you, it gives you a great opinion of him. And when it's finished, he comes to you and say to you, well, have you decided we can travel together if you want? Yes. Yeah. We're willing to travel with you. Yeah. We... Be perfect for us. Perfect. That's clearly a sign of the sky and of the faith, because I am in the middle of a problem. I don't know where to go. Yeah. I'm a bit lost, so I will follow your steps. We also have uh, another place to be here in the swamp be before returning to the city. It's looking at you like, hmm, interesting. What are you looking for? We are heading to a temple. It's, it's look. It, it, it look as you. It's looking looking at you, and it, it realizes in this moment that you are an elf, and so it's like trouble with the visions. Like, oh, I see a temple, a black temple, probably, because two nights ago we saw um, a shine, a black, um, a black wall, and some shining on a hill nearby. And I was so struck by the image, it was so frightened that even if you can see I am so big and so fierce, I couldn't have the, the strength to, to go and, and see what it was. If you want, I can, I can guide you to, the, to this black wall. Does, it, uh, does the location he's giving us agree with what the boys told us? No, I you think that is something a bit different uh, because you, the, the boy uh, said to you that uh, you should travel at least another day, maybe two, and he's saying that is nearer. Probably is something else, but it could be a, 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 I don't know, a cue for for you. Yeah, it's near, so I think we should check it if it's on the way. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Easy lying. Uh, how can I? I how you can, can I make a check of easy. insight. Yeah, you can make please. a check of insight. Yeah. Make Just to see if he's fooling us. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 17 with a die, and I had oh, uh, yeah. intuition. Okay, 19. I rolled the natural one. Okay, <laughs> perfect. Okay. Um, Nico, can you roll for me your blood die? Yeah. Because when you do a one, the Grandmaster can ask you to roll the blood die. Okay, so I, I'm a Shiva. Yeah. <laughs> I roll the three. So you're trying to see if the man is lying to you. And he gives you the impression that he's, uh, he's, very, he's a very strong man. And a, 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 a thought passed through your mind. It's like he could kill me in just one minute and it strikes you so so 
in, in, in so suddenly that you are trying you like oh my god I'm I'm very frightened for my life instead the elf you you look at him and he is not deceiving you but uh, probably is like um, I don't know how to say is uh, is telling the truth but there is something in the in what he say to you that is kind of weird like is lying without knowing that is lying i, I you can... yeah i understand i i want to talk with my puck so i um i take the others and just take a, a few steps back <clears throat> and i say guys i was born in the swamp so there's something not um there's something that not sound to me Because mm -hmm. I, I was born here and I'm a elf of the swamp and I quite know what what is what what are uh, what are the temples and um, not, not the Smigor because we the Smigor temple uh, we we didn't know where it was located but it sounds tricky so I I feel quite um uh, I suspect it's word. It's word. His, it's, his words. It's, it's possible yeah. that the cultists of Smeeborg disguised the true location with illusory versions of the temple. And I think probably what he saw and the reason it intimidated so much was that it was actually a spell. It's probably that appeared like. Yeah. It's too. Um, the, 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 he said to you that it was two days ago. So it's past too, too time, too much time to. Uh, in order to the sorcerer to see if there is um, a scent of magic. But if you want, uh, Robert, you can try to make an arcana check, but with disadvantage because the the effect of the magic could be very low, too low to scent. So if you want, you can do an arcana sure. check with disadvantage. All right, I'll try that. And in the meantime, Valentino, you get an inspiration die because you you play very well the, the, the elf origin, very well. Mm. Uh, I rolled uh, 11 and 12, so that's going to be a total of 15. 15. So you don't see uh, anything magical in him, but the, the, the look that he has and uh, the, the, um, the way that she is, is looking around him like he's lost, and you then see the, the body, you, you saw the body, you remember the body, and they didn't seem to have wounds made from skeletons it is probable that pro they he found the the bodyguards already there in, in nearby the, the temple of smeeborg and some magic of sword um frightener frightening or maybe the the shiver the shiver can can suck the the most courageous the most fierce warriors in all the the, the, the land of legend so You are thinking about this. You are thinking about probably is not re recalling the, the things that happened very well. It's not remembering very well. I I give a look to the sage and I ask him to to check the the bodies. Maybe he could give, he could give us an idea. Well, of to check how the body, that he, he will he will need to to a check the body out. Ah, take the body out. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm. For, for, mm. for he he can make um a medicine check with disadvantage, uh, like just remember. trying to remember things out okay. if you want. And, and uh, you remember, uh, Dave and Valentino, you have inspiration die. If you want, you can give your inspiration die to your follow intrepid ones to have advantage in this way. In this uh, case, I gave my uh, I gave my advantage, advantage so okay. role. The, the check is like normal check because disadvantage and advantage erase each other. Okay. okay so, so you have a normal uh, role. It's very good because it's a 17 plus 4, so it's a yeah. 21 total. Oh, excellent. Perfect. So you remember uh, clearly that they didn't have any wound at all. Like they were just dead just of a sudden. Probably the effect that it uh, Bjork didn't kill him, but re re erase her mem his memory. And the other two bodyguards were too weak and they were killed just by instant. And Bjork probably doesn't know anything about this. 
nothing could at we, all. Could we restore his memory magically? Is that a thing that could be done? Oh, the sorcerer um, knows that it can be done, but not here, maybe in the presence of some magic, but there is a way to restore the memory. Just take Bjork to the point, to the place in which he was um, subject to the effect, uh -huh. and it can retrieve the memory and probably erase and, you know, broke all the... It's not a course, but it's like a course that he has. Well, if it's yeah. further than we are trying to go right now, then perhaps uh, after we visit the temple, we can go there for that. Yeah. I think, I think that uh, is a place that we should not be visiting. No. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> and um, you go to the temple, and we reach the, the end of our session, and you realize that clearly the, the young assassin remembers the road very well, but not so well. Sometimes it's just like, I think it's this, no, it's not this way, it's this way. Um, you are traveling to, uh, through the night in order to use the advantage of darkness um, and to surprise the cultist. You don't know how many cultists there are there. And suddenly during the middle of the night, you see in, in the distance, a small hill around you, you can see through the trees, pieces of dark wall of a, of a giant building of the past. The, now they are just ruins. The, the temple on the, on the hill seems to be like a part of the ancient ruins. It's the last part that it just like um, perfectly um, consoled. Uh, it has black wool, very, very um, lucid one. It's, it's not like, it's like the weather cannot wear the, the, the wall of the temple. On the wall, there are um, symbols in great. And when you see the symbol, especially the sage and the sorcerer, you understand that that's, those symbols are like an ancient tongue, an ancient demonic tongue. You cannot speak it but you can understand that is is like an alphabet. And you see the presence of a very dark power. And inside the temple, there is some lightning, some, some burst of energy that you can see through the, um, through the glass uh, window. And there are a lot of um, uh, trees and, um, and a lot of poisoned um, plants around the hill. And there is a small bridge that can, um, sh uh, in safety, take you to the to the temple. And when Bjork arrived near the temple, he sees the temple. And he say to you, "The the the ear is dead here. It's like, I'm. It's like I'm remembering something, but I don't know what I'm remembering. There's darkness is here in here. Probably the the true magi." The legend that I, I heard when I was a child, they are true. I think they are true. It's like realizing in this moment that all the legends that he, he heard when he was a child are true. And he's like truly frightened by the presence of the, the, the temple. And mm -hmm. you see the, 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 temp, the door of the temple trembling and there is a, a great howl, a great scream in the night, and then all the lights in the temple vanish. And you are in face of the temple with the moon, and you don't know what is happening inside. Mm -hmm. Nice. <clears throat> so here we go with the, with the, our session. I think that we have uh, 10 minutes, and I will ask you how it went, if you recall the, the atmosphere and the set of the setting, if if it was uh, a good experience for you. Yeah, I thought the atmosphere was tremendous. I, when Oliver and I are playing, uh, Oliver will occasionally bang the table and insist on more color, more atmosphere, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I don't think he would have had any reason to do, he wouldn't have needed any more atmosphere. I could, you know, the sense of Port Quag and its dankness and cold and uh, yeah, perfect. I thought everything perfect. Very happy about it. 
Yeah. Very happy. Thank you. Yeah, it's nice. Thank you I like the way that you said, like when when uh, when we put the girl down, like how she she took it resolutely. <laughs> that was nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it is. This is a word of you know of uh, intrepid people, not just the intrepid ones, also. The, the assassins and the people that are controlled by the crowd, the magi, the, the crowd magi, magi, sometimes they are not just bad, they're just victim of the time, victim of the place in which they are born. So for her, it was like um, a sort of free uh, act, a sort of, you know, I don't, I don't feel that. And I usually uh, love to, to bring characters uh, from, from that. And that is one of the characters that I want to play again. Maybe it will, you know, it will crawl, crawl da- um, out from the dance mm-hmm. and and became an interpreter one. I don't know. It's, it's mm-hmm. probably <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's interesting because the atmosphere there also with the, you, you get a sense of, of that world, you know, it they don't have the, the leisure and the comfort for compassion that we hopefully do today right it's a it's a fairly brutal world where you may dispatch a foe not even with particular hatred it's simply too bad they lost they would have killed us move on and it's uh it's an interesting um pared down stark uh way of seeing the world i think yeah yeah and that's the spirit of an intrepid they had to think quickly and effective yeah. And, and I really loved how I really love always in, in each session how the, the system of the guides and the system of the ruling knight uh, works very well with the setting. I, I, I am truly interested in uh, ex- expanding the, the story and see how the story goes with the ruling knights because these are powers that, in some way, they are controlled by the new Salentine Empire. In some ways, they want to just do what they want with the kingdoms and etc. And so it's a very good way to, you know, to evoke this sense of noir experience. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, the guilds can betray the, the, the ruling knight, but the ruling knight can betray the guild itself. So it's, mm-hmm. I, I really love noir. I really love noir. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, there really like... like... Sorry. No, go ahead, Dave. No, go ahead. I was just going to say that it gave me a little bit of a feel. I don't know if you've seen the TV show, The Americans. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And it's you know how uh, Philip and Elizabeth there, they they keep on working for the, you know, for the Soviets, yeah. even though they become morally disenchanted with the orders they're getting. But they're existentially, that's their job. So they continue. Yeah. And I again, that's quite a bleak uh, and it fits the, the, the time frame for 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 what they're talking about. But it's it's a it's a really interesting perspective to have where we're so used to the idea that we should be fully on board with what we're being asked to do in the modern world. And yet yeah. this could be a world where you just have a mission and you think, this is my, this is what I do, you know, yeah. and that's, it is really, yeah. mm-hmm. which is why I like and meeting the old guy as well. Cause it's the like, old guy is, a, is an yeah. addition that I, I put there um, because I, I tried it on a session and people loved it. Like it's it's so weird and so strange because the intrepid one really die very young. And so to find a, an old intrepid one, so sage and so calm and so perfectly fine in, in the environment, is like it, it struck you and it's like, oh, probably I can go old, I can yeah. survive. I don't know. <laughs> That's that would be our best case scenario, wouldn't it? Growing old <laughs> yeah. and yeah. being just sitting in a pub if somewhere in the far north freezing cold but you know at least we're not dead <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I re- and i like the that you have like the 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 sorcerer has the minor conjuring of falton so like there's always an opportunity to to use that but it, it comes with a cost which i think is cool mm. yeah another thing that we haven't yeah we hadn't seen in here at, is that we can explore the swamp is quite big and there are many encounters creatures uh, situations so what we uh, what we want to do in this adaptation is to permit to all of the people to uh, to search to meet uh, characters yeah. to to explore the world of bloods with the, um, mm-hmm. the setting yeah 
Uh, Bjork, there is two uh, encounters which are not uh, combats in the swamp, which is Bjork that you face it, and there is the 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 um, the, the sad story of the messenger killed by by uh, a ruling knight, which stri strike every time I played it. The people are so striken by it. It's just like a very small way to insert the setting atmosphere, the setting tone. It's just a way to remember to you that you are in Blast World. It's not like an heroic fantasy. It's Blast World, so it's grimdark. It's very grimdark. Mm -hmm. People can betray you any time. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Definitely. So thank, thank you me. all for the session. Thank you. I hope to be to have been uh, a great, great master. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. That was great. Thank you, Daniele. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, thank you Rob. Thank, thank you, Nico. And I hope Thank anyone you. who sees this wants to find out what happens next, because I'm certainly... <laughs> 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 well, there is the Blast War. There are yeah. the, the, the pieces of Blast War. The Kickstarter. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> That's all. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you all. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.